uh, a friend was in my house when I asked Alexa a question, uh, and and <laughs> I said thank you, and she said you don't have to thank Alexa. I said it just comes out automatically. Hello, so, I do it in case there's a AI uprising. They can always say at least I thanked them. <laughs> but these narcissists know just the amount to show you to keep you on the teat, as it were. This dumb woman sitting here said to herself, Lois, run, don't walk. Today, Lois and I are talking about something we know a little too well. We're talking about narcissists. If you join us for one of our previous episodes on the topic, we talked about really what it was like to be the child of a nar narcissist, how to cope with having a parent that was narcissistic. Um, now we're talking about it in a whole different light, but in a way you might not have experienced. The reason we're talking about whether the person you're dating is a narcissist or just an asshole. <laughs> the reason why I wanted to talk about this, Lois, is as we as a society become more therapized and more aware or Googling the symptoms of our boyfriend to see why he treats us like shit, the word narcissist pops up a lot. And then you have your friends reinforcing it. Oh, he's just a narcissist. Oh, he doesn't call you back because he's a narcissist. You've broken up with the guy. You're on social media. And social media has just this way of knowing when you are heartbroken. It shows you quotes. It shows you... You could find the, the, the algorithm of uh, Instagram that gives you all the ways to get back with the person. It could show you all the ways to, you know, delete their number. But narcissism in your partner shows up a lot to the point where I genuinely feel we're over diagnosing our ex lovers with narcissism. So I wanted us to, as experts in the field, just from emotional experience, um, to kind of define what an actual narcissist is and is the person you're dating just a fucking dick? Because in reality, uh, one in one in 200 people have narcissism in America. So it's not very likely that the person you're dating is a narcissist. The other token of that that's important to recognize, and I am guilty of this as well, I'm codependent. I have an anxiety um, attachment style. I seek out a narcissist. And narcissists seek out me. So I have my responsibility as a co- codependent prone person to to not get involved with the narcissist because that's my pension so that's my responsibility so we're going to kind of give you the the th how to know you're dating a narcissist by the second date so that there isn't a third one. Oh yes yes if you're watching us on youtube now's a good time to hit like and subscribe and ring that little bell so you get notified every time a new episode goes live though we are consistent in our release every friday a new episode gets dropped so lois how do we know if someone is a narcissist look no is probably a bit strong but um you know to how about Maybe, how do we strongly suspect that they may be? Because here's the thing. There are flags. There are there are indicators and there are flags. Oh, God, yes. Yes, there. Yes, 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 yes. And one of the things is I, you know, look back because I have a history of really only <laughs> being attracted to and being pursued by wow. narcissists. So um, as I, you know, was looking back on my experiences and, you know, um, I started to say, you know, I, I tried to remember, you know, I one was so clear on, you know, the first date, Jesus, I, you know, we'll talk about that later. I mean, but when I look back, on the others, you know, the truth be told, they all sort of followed the same pattern. Wow. 
And, you know, what it is, is that in the beginning, you know, they're overwhelming you with, you know, lovey-dovey, and today would be touchy-feely, lovey-dovey texts. Sure. A few phone, you know, a few uh, years back, it would have been lots of phone calls and, you know, in several times a day and, you know, you know, excessive compliments and goo-goo eyes when they looked at you, you know. I remember one in particular was like, what, 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 you know, I could almost see him going into motion. And this was not an actor. Okay. Wow. This is, this is a, you know, ordinary working person. But I saw those goo goo eyes take place. And, you know, of course I fell for it hook, line, and sinker, you know, but usually you can kind of see this on the first date. And, and most, assuredly by the second you know your gut is telling you something's a bit off <clears throat> so huh. you know that love bombing stuff I mean this is where it gets really hard because with love bombing you know it's tantalizing and it's seductive and if you've been without a partner for a while you know, you're you kind of you've sort of been craving this. You know, you've been needing that close human contact, and um, you know it's really easy for us to drop our guard because, listen, who doesn't love being loved? Come on, sure, that's exactly you know, right. I mean, this is something we, you know, we all kind of crave, and so. It, it 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 really becomes it it's almost impossible not to sucker into this it really is so well and the, and the problem with love bombing too is if you've allowed the relationship to go on much longer and you start getting into those fights um you start they love bomb you when you make up too and you oh, start oh my craving god yes it. you start craving this high after a low. So it, 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 it usually is indicative of a pattern that is very dangerous and addictive. So very much so. So you really have to understand that narcissists typically love bomb. Right. And while you really need to hear how fabulous you are, how you're the best thing that ever happened, blah, 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 and maybe the flowers, maybe a little blue block box with a white ribbon, all of these, you know, you start to think that it's the real deal, maybe this is it, but you've got to know that when narcissists love bomb, it's to obtain power and control over you. Don't, don't, don't. Don't lie to yourself or just don't because the proof is and if you don't succumb, how quickly they change. Wow. So, you know, immediately this is making me think um, you don't want to go into a date uh, like a like a scientist or a detective going, well, let's just and and be suspicious of every loving gesture, right? But no, of course not. But it is the intensity and the amount of these gestures that should be sending a red flag. Because I would say I would say to myself, I don't. I actually really don't like it when someone shows me that much attention. However, if I once I've been hooked. Then I want all the attention. Um, so I, so I, while you're explaining love bombing, I'd be like, oh, that'd be such a turnoff. But these narcissists know just the amount to show you, to keep you on the teat, as it were. You know, so you, I, I'm not suggesting, it's just a fine line between looking out for the bad behavior and and in just enjoying it. I, it. Does that make sense what I'm trying to get at? Like, I, Listen, it's a hard line to walk, but I'm telling you, um, not, obviously, Jessica, you're absolutely right. You don't want to be, 
you know, a detective. You don't. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm no, saying. No, I don't think you are saying that. No, but yet you still have to have a certain awareness. Um. You're, and, you're on a date, for God's sake, right? It's date number two. You're not looking for a problem. You are looking for a connection, and you're looking for s- sustainability, too. Like, is this amount of interest sustainable? Those are probably good indicators as to whether or not this is a healthy amount of interest level. Exactly, exactly. But while you're on that first or second date, you know, watch how they treat others especially those that they believe are uh, beneath them. You know, see how they talk. Hopefully it's a waiter, if it's a guy you're seeing, or a waitress, if it's a girl you're seeing, because it's how are they treating them? Wow. It's, It's just one of those things that you'll see. Either they go so overboard, with charm. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. See, Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say they're going to treat that person like shit, but wow, it could be both ways. They don't even need to treat them like shit. They, you see, you need to be, you need to be alert. Wow. You need to take off the rose colored glasses. Yes. Or or tell yourself it's been so long since I've been on a date and I finally have a connection with someone, I'm going to make this work, you know? Exactly. Hello. And so, <laughs> so what you're doing here is you're looking for nuance. Wow. It's nuance. You're not going to see your date say to the waiter, hey, go get me an effing drink. You're not going to do that. But you can see, look at the body language. Look at... um the attitude, the tone of voice. Wow. You know, there's, if, if someone is, um, and of course, you know, this can really apply to an asshole too. It can. And, you know, I think I, I want to clarify here. When I'm talking about like dating an asshole, we're talking about the guy that doesn't text you back for three days or only hits you up when he wants to fuck. And, you know, that's just a dude who's a that fuck just- boy. Yeah. He's not a narcissist. He just doesn't want to commit to you. That's different. That you know? is different. And that yes, is different. There are assholes out there. You can see, I waited on them, Lois. I waited on the guy who wined and dined this bitch for two and a half hours, bought every bottle of wine, got three desserts, ordered the lobster, a $250 bill, left me a $5 fucking tip. And I almost ran after her. And said, I just want you to know who you went on a date with. I I couldn't. And you know what? If I wasn't 19, I would have. If I was the age I was today, I would have lost that fucking job and told that woman who she was dating. And I would have spit in the guy's face. That's a little bit of an exaggeration. But a $5 tip after spending $250 and wasting one of my tables all day just to pull the wool over this woman's eyes. You're dating a, that's an asshole and a narcissist for sure. Actually, honey, I did do that with, while I was building my house, I needed to rent places to live. And I had this one landlord who was just a terror. I mean, he had the gardener check my garbage. Are you kidding? No, I mean, he was a nightmare. Oh, Jesus. And it just reached a point where, I mean, he would just come unannounced. He, I mean, he was Horrific. It sounds horrible. It was horrible. And I moved in, fixed up the place, and he said to me, you know, you made it look so nice that I'm going to put it up for sale now. And I had just been there two months. I had to get an attorney. Anyway, long story short, comes the time that I was trying to move, and I did not want him poking around. And I knew he came when I wasn't there. Oh my so, God. Yes. So I did this little thing of tying very thin, I don't know if it was thread or it was a very thin kind of string around these driveway gates. And I saw him at on the street, but I wasn't sure if he had been up the driveway. 
and I jumped out of my car. He saw me, and he went up the road where it was dead-ended. And I looked, and damn, if that string wasn't broken. I got Are you in my, kidding me? I, I tell you, I lost it. I lost it. I drove up the road. He got, he had to do a turnaround. I jumped out of the car. I'm telling you, the lady that was in his car, and he both looked terrified because I had to look like a wild woman. <gasps> and I, you know, I was screaming at him. I told you, you needed 20, 24 hours. I, you went up in my apart, in my house anyway. And how dare you? And you're nothing but a piece of garbage. And I looked at this woman. I looked at her and I said, you know, you're a nice looking woman. You're probably a nice lady. Let me tell you something. Get out of this relationship <laughs> with this man because he's a cheap, no good son of a bitch who is not trustworthy. Wow. I, oh no, I did it. And I, and, and so, I mean, you said that I hadn't planned on, I no. mean, it just occurred to me. It's a when, great story. When you say, but I mean, when I lose it, which isn't all that often, but you know, I was under stress to move. The house wasn't ready. I had, all, I mean, the whole, and when I saw what he did, and I you were just, at the end of your string. I was. I was. <laughs> and the string was broken. Oh, what and, a fucking And nightmare. he didn't say a word. She, I'm telling you, the two of them looked like they were terrified I was going to pull out a gun. <laughs> I, you know, I'm I could, sorry to laugh, but holy I could shit. see how terrified they were. But anyway, do pay attention to how they treat other people. I think, I, I actually, this is a comedian who told this story that he stopped being friends with somebody after he heard how they spoke to their Alexa at a party. <laughs> Is that not wonderful? Because, listen, it kind of denotes how they feel about lower life forms or lower, you know, service industry things. And I, you know what? I kind of love that. Is it a little extreme? Maybe they weren't that good a friend with that person to begin with, but there was an indicator there to how they viewed things. Well, I, I will tell you, somebody, a, a friend was in my house when I asked Alexa a question, uh, and, and <laughs> I said, thank you. And she said, you don't have to thank Alexa. I said, it just comes out automatically. Hello. So, I do it in case there's a AI uprising. They can always say, at least I thanked them. <laughs> but, but that's exactly right. If you were trained to thank somebody or be inclined to thank somebody for their service, I don't know. It's so weird thanking I, You Alexa. know what? Somebody's answering you with your question you had, you say thank you. Anyway. And you know what? I think they, I do think they record it, but carrying on. <laughs> okay. So now, you know, another thing to do is to listen. I mean, really, really listen to the, their conversations. And I think if you listen very hard, you'll come to understand that they're more monologues than they are conversations. This is, um, this is a, this is a hard one for someone that's inclined to have people like them. I want people to like me. So I've learned how to listen and I've learned how to prompt somebody and give them the opportunity, give them the floor. Oh, and, sure. and so what the problem when you get, you're getting a monologue from somebody, especially on the second or first date, you think you're getting them to open up. But in reality, you're not getting a two-way street where you can interject or get someone's opinion or have a flow. Well, where are they saying anywhere? And what about you? Right? Oh, my God. Oh, my okay. God. I do the same thing. I, you know, I always feel, um, well, first of all, I'm interested in in who they are, what they have to yes, say. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but... And so I too want them to like me, and I don't like dominating, which I can be very dominating uh, in a it conversation. Is an issue of mine, yes. So you know, I do want, and I do want to know about them. But if they ramble on, and it, you know, let's say, well, you start off by saying, "Tell me about you." And, you know, they say, well, I was born, blah, 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 and I went to school, blah, blah, blah. What about you? 
little give and take, a little two way. If that doesn't happen, red flag. It should be. That's exactly right. And, and you know, and then, you know, and I am a good listener. And uh, I remember what people say because yes. I am listening. Yes. I am not thinking about what I'm going to say next. So often people will say, oh, you remember that? Of course I do because I listen to you. So when you're listening, you know, listen to what they say about past relationships. You know, at some point you're going to say, have you ever been married? Uh, bah, bah, you know. Uh, or it comes up, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of like maybe not pursuing that information right at the top. But you have to have those, those conversations come forward. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, they do. So, you know, listen to how they describe any of their past relationships. Do you hear respect for the time they spent with that person? Right. You know, or are you hearing all the dreadful things about them? Do they, that, yeah, how how bad, like, yeah, you, you can pick up the keywords of what's being said and what's exactly. not being said. I think exactly. that's right. And then, of course, for women dating men, it's hard to sometime maneuver into this, but you can really ask whether it's, are your parents still alive? Whatever it is, try to, try to ask and zero in about their mother. Mm. Okay. Interesting, Lois. And it's not only what they say, but how they say it. So let me tell you. This is one of my not-so-fine moments. I remember the first date. I, it was in Palm Beach. Okay. And it was a very popular restaurant. So we were waiting for a table. And so I was sitting at the bar, and he was standing behind me. And I asked him, well, tell me about, I mean, he, I had met him at a party and he had told me what his father did. And I remember laughing because he said, I mean, this is, this goes back to, you know, like the depression, 1936, 1938. Oh, he said, sure. oh, my father was a silk weaver. Oh, he made $200 a week. I said, give me a break. Your father was running numbers. Who nobody made two hundred dollars a week weaving silk in Philadelphia. <laughs> but I didn't hear anything about his mother. Interesting. So when he opened his mouth about his mother, it was so vitriol. It was so venomous. <sighs> How she was a whatever, whatever in the old country. And she met his father uh, in Cuba, had been on a deportation list. And, oh, my God. And she was nobility. And she treated him, never let him forget he was a peasant. Ladies, people. This dumb woman sitting here said to herself, Lois, run, don't walk. <laughs> this is a misogynist wow. personified. Wow. This is someone who has been very successful in his life, and he is all about him. Whoa. Did you run? Of course not. <laughs> I'm sorry you laughed because I lived it. I get it. Of course not. I tell you, I mean, where in the world my head was, I really, I do know. Okay. I do know. And this certainly is not, uh, you know, I've never made this excuse for myself, but I was living in a place where I didn't know anyone, and I met a number of men who, you know, just weren't 
people I would really have much in common with. And this person was charming and he was bright and he was self-made. So these were things that I had put a lot of weight on those three things. I understand things. that, yes. And so it was, oh, well, you know, let me just ignore it. I mean, there's also the element, too, if you're like me, a codependent, where you've decided you can fix it or you can make that better or, or believe me, I totally, I've been there. Well, what happened with me is, you know, and I'll, I'll finish up the story, is I stayed again on and on and on for some seven years. Wow. Uh, until he left to, as I say, for a golf course. And I just kept reducing the bar on <sighs> what I needed from him. And every time I would reduce that bar, he came in lower. Wow. So, believe me, run, 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 because you will never be able to have an empathetic partner, but one you will need to adulate at all times. Never express displeasure without being manipulated and punished and eventually discarded when they meet another person who will give them what you used to give them when you first met them and just got just goddamn tired of building them up when all they did was put you down. So getting back to the first, your first or second date, watch how much you like them as the evening rolls on. Because I guess that you know, they can't really keep it up without something in you saying, you know, he is really talking about himself a great deal. Sure. Or why hasn't he really seemed to be interested in who I am and what I'm all about? And why is he feeling the need to bowl me over with how wonderful he thinks I am. You know, so just all I'm saying is start to question. Be a little more judicious yes. in listening. Just kind of find out. You know, the if if you choose to overlook it and you start to see the other side, which I guarantee you, you will see. Because that love bombing is not kept up forever. No, it can't And be. they will turn like that. All it takes is one little thing out of your mouth to see a completely different side of them. And that, if you're not in it too deep, and even if you are, get the hell out. Get the hell out. I think we need to dedicate a whole episode to, now that you recognize he's a narcissist, but you're in deep, how do you get out and how do you restore mm. your self-esteem? I think the thing I'm I'm hearing too, Lois, is and I've, I've come into relationships with narcissists at both sides with a lot of esteem and let that be eroded and with no self-esteem and mm -hmm. then came out worse. So, oh, yeah. Because I don't listen to the, the voice that says, I don't like this guy halfway into the evening if my self-esteem is low. But that voice is there. So I think we could do a whole episode emboldening that voice in us. Um, how to make a plan to leave when you finally realize it is time to leave if you've gotten in too deep. I think the thing I also want to say, the thing I, the thing I really want to impart with our friends that are listening is you're not going to change a narcissist. You're also not emotionally responsible to fix the narcissist. There's a reason, there is a reason why this narcissist found you. It's because you're still believing you deserve this level of companionship. 
And that's, this is the only indicator of a narcissist entering your life is that you still need to work on your self-esteem and your, and your value system and how high you value yourself. You are, they are not there for you to fix them. Um, and then the other, the other thing that we were talked about is, is he an asshole? If a guy's just not calling you back and doesn't exactly. want to commit that guy, a narcissist can be an asshole, but an asshole doesn't necessarily have to be right. a narcissist. Absolutely. You know, it, an asshole is in a category different than a narcissist. That's exactly right. And so let me say this. If you expect, and I do, when, you know, I'm thinking back to one relationship and and. If I text somebody, I expect a text in return within 24 hours. And if you really are pursuing me, I suggest you text a whole lot faster than that. <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay. Now, I don't buy the excuse, busy. Give me a break. Anyone, Nobody you text is... the person back that you want to talk to. You just do. Exactly. And if you can't talk because you're up to here with the deadline or whatever, you text back and say, I'm, thank you for texting. I love hearing from you. I want to talk to you, but I can't until such and such a time. Correct. Absolutely. You respond, God damn it. It's, you know, this, this, this never, never land that texts go to. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I dislike texting so much. I understand much. that. Yes, absolutely. You know, I mean, people feel, and even, you know, I see a lot of people my generation, you know, taking to texting in lieu of calling. Sure. And I hear, I just read recently that phone call etiquette requires that we text first to see if it's a good time. What the hell? Are you joking me? Really? If you if I'm calling you and it's not an opportune time, don't you can pick do up one of two things. <laughs> you can not pick up, or you could pick up and say, Darling, I want to talk with you, but I don't have the time now. Uh, are you gonna be available in such and such whatever? Or let me try to call you back in five. Are you gonna be around? I mean, even the, you know, when, when you're on, when you're on a phone call and another phone call comes through, I mean, I don't know about Samsung, but I know Apple has your choice of messages to send out. That's exactly right. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a improved voice, um, you know, answering machine, to your voicemail? I mean, what more do you possibly, I mean, this way, it doesn't even need to go to voicemail. It could keep that clear. I mean, I know people whose voicemails were either never set up or they are completely full. Yes, yes. And they have, I could see when they open their phone, they've got 1,200 unread texts the fuck are you doing? I think what this is making me realize is the ability to be contacted at any given time is making people feel like they have no time. So they avoid all this contact. Uh, there's, I, there's actually probably a whole episode on, on that as well is, um, the anxiety that being able to be reached is causing people and then they create all these excuses why they can't respond to somebody or they can't be available and and it lessens the connection that we can actually experience with people well for sure i mean my god you know it's uh, so if you're dating someone and um uh, Fuck, Lois. There's, oh, God, the person. I mean, I, I, you know, I once told someone, you know, that waited, uh, that didn't respond for three days. I said, I don't appreciate that lack of respect. Now, it was somebody considerably younger than me. And he looked at me like, lack of respect. He couldn't wrap his head around really? the fact wow. that this showed a lack of respect. Wow. 
And, you know, maybe it's my Italian with, you know, the, we're very big on respect. Yes. I, you know, because that's exactly a phrase I would use, too. That's exactly yeah, right. It's, it's, we're very big on respect. That, do, that doesn't respect me. Um, sure. And, and he was truly apologetic because I guess for him, not only did he have no idea that, you know, I would consider it lack of respect, he understood that respecting somebody was something he he wanted to do. Right. So, so he needed that to never know. happened again. That never happened again. Yeah, I, and I guess that is the, also the difference between whether you're dating an asshole or someone who just doesn't get it. Right. Exactly. Like you stand up for what you believe, and if and you say, "Hey, I want to text within 24 hours," and this person goes, "I can't fucking do that." Bye bye. Or you get the guy like you just respond you know, shared, who goes, oh, that is not how I wanted to interact with you. I apologize. Let's move forward and I'll do better. You know? Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's so all in all, you know, I mean, hey, if, if, if all you want is a fuck buddy. Those can care? be found. <laughs> what do you care? But if you're trying to now, even with the friendship, I'm going to tell you, even with the friendship. That's exactly right. I called a lady who, by her own admission, would repeat to me over and over again how she pursued me in the friendship. And I called her on a Sunday, and she couldn't talk. She's like, you know, I can't talk now. Okay, fine. One week later, she called me back. And I was not happy. And I said, I'm sorry, but this is not how you treat a friend. Yeah. She went into this whole dissertation about it was the week that the husband had died eight years ago. And, 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 and you know, and a, and a friend would understand that. I said, no, 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 no. The answer is no. Because if you thought of me as a friend, you'd have picked up the phone and shared what you were going through. That's right. So I'm sorry. Here's what I'm going to say to you. And I, I can't believe I really did this, but it was just a couple of years ago. I said, I want you to think about what I demand in a friendship. And it's really not a lot. It's just... I don't wait a week for someone to call me back. And if you can find a way to agree with that, that you will be more available. Or than, communicative. Or communicative. But I said more available because yeah. it was always something. Oh, She'd make a date. Yo, yeah. No, this just wasn't this one thing. Gotcha. She'd make a date. Her daughter needed this. She'd make a date. She had to do this with the grandkids. You know, you can only take so much. That's of exactly that. right. That's exactly and right. And so I said, I want you to know I will be here, but it has to be, you have to be at meeting me at least halfway. Wow. And truth be told, I never heard from her. And you did the right you you put your boundary up, you put your needs up, and you got the you got the response. And yeah. I think that does work out exactly right with the person you're dating too. Your uh, needs, precisely. Your needs are not some uh, burden to somebody. Now, and if they are, that's not the person for you. They're not for you. Get get out of there. You're I mean, not unreasonable. You're not this, you know, pariah who shouldn't be dated. That guy's just an asshole, or he's a narcissist. <laughs> That's right. And on that note, I Jessica, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me and our audience your wonderful perspective. So. Oh, I hard fought just like I know, hard won just like I know yours are. Yeah, um, yeah. But that's why I think we really both enjoy sharing um, our experiences so that you, our audience member, can benefit from them. We want to hear from you. What, how did you avoid the narcissist? What took you so long from avoiding the narcissist? How did you get out? And, and what more would you like to hear from us on this subject or on something else? There's a lot of different ways you can get in contact with us. If you have a specific question for Lois, you can email us at silverandsensational at gmail.com. We're on social medias, on Facebook, TikTok, 
Instagram, all at Silver and Sensational. And Lois, if they're watching us on YouTube, what should our friends do? Well, you know, actually, you can comment there as well. And please, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit like. And do share us with your friends, even if they're not your friends. Just share us and press that bell that'll notify you when our new broadcast comes up, which is basically every Friday. So thank you so very much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed it, and we look forward to seeing you again next Friday. Jessica, thank you. Thank you, thank you, and goodbye to you and goodbye to all of you out there. Thank you, Lois. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much for watching us today, and please hit like, subscribe, and do share us with your friends. And again, we love having you as our audience. Stay with us. See us every Friday for a new episode. Bye.